Hey everybody, Brady here from BGWX. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas for those that celebrate. And without further ado, let's get right into it here. Breaking down the ongoing potential wintry turn we're going to, ladies and gentlemen. Things might be getting excited here. T come take a walk with me. Let's break it down. Let's see what we're looking at here. So currently, you can see we have a big time high pressure system that is that is moving through on the backside here. So we're still above average here and that high pressure and that cold air is still kind of locked into place here. Uh, if we just pull up the mean map here on the Jeff's ensemble, 18C came out and you can see here our high pressure still in place. So cold air in the Northeastern US is still gonna kind of be locked into place through into the weekend here but as we approach the weekend then we start taking potential uh we have a new storm that comes in we get a little bit rainier potentially some freezing rain potential with that as well i'd keep an eye on that models tend to underestimate uh the cad we call it cold air damming and that high pressure basically locks in that cold air um into lower lower elevations at the surface and it's able uh to hold a little bit better than some suggest but we will be taking a little bit of a warmer turn regardless um across really much of the country here um and then it's hard to say after that a little bit this, this is an ensemble mean so don't take this verbatim again just want to demonstrate a little bit of the of the idea and you can get a get a look here at 500 height anomalies here again 500 millibars in the atmosphere for those that forget uh, when we look at it is the upper levels of the atmosphere so when i draw a vertical column imagine this is the atmosphere this is not related to the map below it but imagine i draw that vertical column of the atmosphere this is the top of the atmosphere we'll you know label that you know around we look at typically top of the atmosphere we look at is usually around 10 millibars and we look at the polar vortex um and then you know towards the middle we call this is where we start to call the upper levels that is 500 and then here at the a thousand millibars here that's kind of what we look at as the surface again that is the kind of map we're reading here and these are the height anomalies so reading um high um heights that are sinking in height in uh heights that are rising and heights that are sinking basically we look at the blue as trough typically a lot of times associated with cold air not always uh, cold super cold air within those systems but typically that's kind of the idea in the red high pressure so when we break this down here we can get start to get an idea as we transition here we zoom out here to the whole country here at north america uh, if you're on a phone zoom in a little bit if you need to but the kind of the idea is we see a big time uh you know canadian warming event basically take place here where a high pressure evolves and we over Canada, we get a negative NAO, and eventually, you, know, you can see troughing over the Atlantic starts to build back westward as we move into that first week of January. And that is kind of the idea here. I think we get a storm to keep an eye on for some interior snow somewhere around that January that January first second time frame, and then January fourth is kind of the sixth. Then after that, maybe yeah, somewhere around that first to third time frame, but that fourth to sixth time frame, then notice what happens here. Notice what happens if we take a screenshot of what starts developing here, uh, just so I can draw and show you what is going on here. And the kind of idea is look at the pieces that start developing here. Uh, we have, you know, ridging building over Alaska. We have a small, um, you know, almost Western ridge. It's a kind of a weaker one develop and that is present on a lot of the ensemble so i'd be curious to see how that plays out um models can oftentimes really tend to underestimate the strength uh, uh of ridges and the placement as well so there's still a lot of volatility i would say with that placement especially with the storm that comes in behind it which is starts to be the next part of which we're going to discuss and how this pattern gets even more interesting believe it or not but then we start to see this negative nao start to develop here and again, you know, I've heard some people talk about it. This is going to be a west based kind of NAO to start off here. And, you know, east based is kind of when is basically meaning it's it's literally what in the title farther east is located the high pressure, basically. And so the NAO North Atlantic Oscillation, what we call it, it's a teleconnection. And it's just basically the same thing, though, as being able to read high pressure and, you know, knowing how it relates to us. It's, it's not and it's. You just have to be able to know it's just fancy terms. That's all it is, negative NAO. 
and then we what we start to see here is this troughing build back over the west here and again 500 i'm not the most massive 500 height fan even though i'm using it to describe it to you i really love 500 millibar forticity measuring the spin at 500 millibars versus the height lines you know height lines give you an idea but i feel like a uh, height uh versus uh vort i'll take vort and vorticity is a better demonstration uh just you're able to break down the pieces a lot better especially as you get closer to a system but in the long range this is fine because we're trying to identify the p if the pieces are there for a potential storm threat and i think the pieces are there for a storm threat i think this fourth to sixth time frame needs to definitely be keep an eye on now i wouldn't lean i wouldn't initially lean i know it's long term this is still long range it's about nine to ten days out it's still pretty far out i would not lean towards this though being maybe it, it, well, there could be some change in that there, there's still a lot of change I wouldn't initially lean towards this being, you know, one of those massive, you know, big time ceilings in terms of, you know, a store. I think, you know, there's there could be a blockbuster ceiling the theoretically, but it's still way too early to get into really any details. Um, but I'm trying to push myself a little bit to look at patterns and be able to identify what we, what we may be able to look at. The flow is still a little bit fast, though. You can see it's a little bit progressive still at this point. So I would love to get that trough further southwest we're still so far out uh, but i would love to get that trough just a little bit uh you know the, the the center of our trough here you can see our height lines where they're strongest i would love to push that just a little bit further southwest especially you know we have I, a lot of my followers live in this region right here and and, and most of them confined even to the northeast and mid-atlantic within that but the idea is we push this trough further southwest just a little bit and you'll be able to consolidate more energy sooner and further right now though you love the idea that you're even a little bit too progressive to be able to do that and if you do amplify sooner you'd know some there is a little bit you know people wonder about oh, cold air a little bit look where your 540 height line is there cold air it, not not going to be the problem uh, too significantly I think with the system I think we'll be able to have enough cold air catch up in time for that and then after things get very interesting to notice what happens and this is a general consensus here height lines start building back again we get a really tall western ridge start forming that actually goes all the way through almost into Europe basically and we still holding a negative NAO here a strong Canadian block and notice now at this point you know kind of look how our blocking is building in here as i screenshot it for you notice we build in and we still have a little bit one thing i'm not a fan of is still uh how broad we are with our trough troughing here mainly because the flow is still a little bit connected i would love to build in a little bit more ridging um, in between systems here uh, let me slide back there but the idea is that we kind of trap a system in here potentially and there's a going to be a lot of energy that needs to be consolidated again at 500 millibar vorticity down the range here in this time frame this january 8th to 9th 7th to 9th somewhere in here there is a lot of potential within this a lot of potential notice how our trough base is further west here it's deep to a lot of members bringing this is an ensemble mean a lot of members bringing it further south there's plenty of cold air to work with potentially more widespread potentially to somewhere where we could be looking at places further uh, in the central part of the country and even into the south southern part of the country as well to be able to get into to some of this uh potential snowier turn in the weather too and if we look at the european ensemble uh, you can see this is 18z, but let me, if I slide back to 12z, if we play this out, notice Euro showing a similar, similar idea in the progression uh, to an actually really decent spot here um, with that first system, January 4th to 6th, a little bit stronger, more persistent uh, Western ridging in terms of the ensemble mean at 12z, but then that idea that that troughing builds back with a tall Western ridge Again, you can kind of get the idea here. Tall Western Ridge, our boom, our tall Western Ridge with that negative NAO in place, ridging builds back and at 18Z, GF, the Jeff's uh, 
the ensemble members of the GFS push this a bit further southwest. And the Jeffs had a great look, you know, down the line to this seventh to ninth uh, time period here. So things are getting really interesting. There's an opportunity. And then even after that, I would say there will be opportunities. I think we could potentially lock in potentially this pattern. Again, keyword potentially. I know I'm saying a lot because it's still far out. There's no guarantees. But this pattern is a little bit more than just promising. I think there is real there is real backing here to this pattern that's coming up in January. And it could allow a lot of people that have had some snowless, near snowless winters over the past uh, couple years now to be able to really potentially some people could be able to see a lot more than they have at the end of January when, when we look back at this than we have the last couple winters, maybe some combined. So there is a lot of promise, but again, almost more than promise, I would say. But again, hasn't happened yet. Does not guarantee there will be storms. So we got to keep an eye on this. I will keep tracking this. Be on the lookout for my live streams, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you all are having a Merry Christmas and are have a Happy New Year as well.